Now that you have Starter Template Plus Desktop Edition running, I just want to give you an overview as to what it does and how you can use it. I'm not going to go in depth into how you can look at the code and we're not going to go over the code because I've spent a fair amount of time documenting every single line, hoping just to kind of show you and explain to you and break down the events and the actions. So I just kind of want to show you what happens when you hit play. So you have to play from the menu and I'll get into that in a second as to why. Uh, hopefully you can hear the music playing. Let's go to the options menu here and basically what I've done is I've decided to just kind of give you three options here. Full screen, mute SFX, and mute music. Let's mute the music. Now you can actually hear my voice hopefully a little bit better and really I wanted to just focus on how this actually works. So I wanted to show you that you can have an options menu for your main menu on the same layout, you just have to scroll over. Let's actually mute the SFX as well, because every time I put my cursor over a button, it makes a noise. So let's do that as well. Now, part of this uh, endeavor with the templates is all of this UI comes with different icons that you can use. So I'll show you that in a second. But basically, I've been able to make the same icon object and then just switch out the animations. So here we have our options menu. It has our full screen. We can mute the SFX and mute the music globally. So when I go into my game, I can then unmute the music. That is something that I didn't program in, but it's something that you can very easily do because we have that feature. The music and the full screen are all controlled by one global object. Now you'll notice up here, if you're running on NWJS, which I recommend that you do, uh, if you're in windowed mode, you'll just get some debug options here where it says the project name, the project version, and how many objects are on the screen, uh, if this is true or false, if music and SFX are one, then they are turned off. Uh, and if I hit that, you'll see that it live updates to being zero or not. Uh, then we have our full screen, same thing, except now you can't actually tell that that's turning to one, but it is. Uh, our pause menu we haven't gotten to and our room menu. So the other thing that we're tracking is we're tracking our room. So let me just show you, you know, we have our basic social icons here that kind of scale up, which is nice when you put your mouse over it. And then we have this cool scrolling background and a hovering kind of scaling logo. So basically this is just the bare bones menu that you hate making essentially, but you always want to have just to kind of give your game that, I don't know, a little bit po a little bit of polish. So we're going to hit start game here and you can see here that it just says game, hit P to pause. And I actually uh, made it so you can move around with the arrow keys and W, A, S, and D. Uh, and then when you hit P to pause, it'll pause not only the menu, but it'll actually stop you from using the controls altogether. And then you can actually go back to the menu and do it again. So let's hit start there. Let's hit P. And now if I hit P again, it'll actually unpause. So this is pretty much the template in a nutshell. What I just want to briefly explain is what I'm doing for the most part is I'm doing all of my objects on this layer, on the menu layout not layer. Uh, what, what I really tried to do was highlight that using global objects for these kind of things is really important, especially when it comes to global options for your game. So we have this object global that has all of our controls, inst mute music, and they're all instance variables, mute SFX, full screen, paused, and room. Uh, one of the things that you, that I didn't show, let me show this to you real fast, is when I start the, when I start the, uh, template back up, you can hear the music again. If I go into start game, it's going to change the room from zero to one. So I've actually implemented my own room system and I use this to control things like the music. So when I hit start game, you're going to hear the next track play on top, which is actually just kind of an addition to the original menu track, which I think sounds really cool. But if I pause and go back to the menu, you can hear it go back to the menu track because I'm on room zero. So there's cool things like that that kind of define the global scope a little bit more. And we try to keep these things global. And when I say global, I mean up here, this is turned to yes. It means that the objects are not destroyed at the end of the layout. So another object that's global here is our background. And I actually can't click on this, but our background right here is also a global object. And the reason is I have it scrolling in two different positions. 
I have it scrolling horizontally and vertically. And because of that, it creates this diagonal effect. And if I had copied and pasted this object over to the next layout, it would kind of reset itself and look a little funny. So I thought I might as well just let the global object not destroy it by the end of the menu layout. So when we do switch to the game layout, the object global and the object background both come with. So the only thing that's on this layout is this. It's very bare bones, but it works. Now you can completely get rid of this background object. It doesn't have to be global as in most games don't have global background objects. You're probably going to have your own tile map or something like that to go over this. This is just an example as to how this works. This menu system is very simple to use and hopefully you can read about it more in the game event. It's all very documented to as much as I can. If you have ideas and suggestions for this template, then please let me know. I would love to add more to this. This is the first version of it. So if you see something that you want added or if something doesn't make sense, please let me know. The one thing that I want to show you next is the, I guess this is the last thing that I want to show you is the icons. So let me turn off the grid here. Uh, and you can see here that this is called object icons. And I briefly touched upon this when we went over it, but I just wanna show you that when you double click on this, I've included 16 other icons that you can use, some of which I just didn't use or get around to using. There's a gamepad icon, there's a cog kind of icon, a question mark, a trophy, uh, the most important one being a star. And this is something that we're probably gonna be using a lot for our level select in our mobile layout because stars kind of indicate if you how well you complete a level. Uh, so that's kind of just what I was doing. So I have this one object here called object icons and then all I'm doing is setting the initial frame. So initial frame here is six and they don't do anything. What the real magic is, is the button below it. So the button that holds the icon has an instance variable called icon ID and that ID, let me hit control Z here, that ID that we click on is what we detect. So that's how that kind of works and I just kind of wanted to explain it and after having gone over that and done that, I just kind of saved my project or tried to save my project. I'm so used to doing that. But that's kind of how this works. So the only other thing I need to mention here is uh, I did try to use only four layers because I thought that maybe maybe I could kind of push the boundaries with the free version, but then I realized how crucial families are and how much I wanted to put subfolders in this. So unfortunately, if you do have the free version of Construct 2, you may not be able to get the best benefit out of this, but I think uh, you can at least load this project and see, and learn from it a little bit, and maybe you can just kind of copy it over and make it your own. Uh, you can definitely get rid of the subfolders if you have the free version, but the uh, families are kind of a really powerful feature that I think everybody needs to have. So you kind of want to make sure that you are aware of that with this starter template. Uh, I did try to keep it to four layers here, so I didn't go over that limit, but uh, that is something that I found to be very beneficial by putting in all the icons that we would hover over into one big uh, one big family. It was a lot easier than having to code it over and over again, but of course you can do that. So I hope that this uh, has helped you out with how to start with the starter template. Uh, one last thing that I just forgot that I really need to mention is you can tint these things. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, let me unlock these so I can actually do this. So things like the icons or things like the windows behind it, we have you know generic buttons here that you can see. This has a, an on state and a press state or an, a hover state. Uh, you can actually add a tint effect and completely change these colors. Now these are green a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. These are all gray. All the icons are gray. All of the, this window is gray. So let's take this window for example, and I already have a tint on here. And what you do is you go to effects and you add the, oh, is this in, this is actually in a family. So this, that's one thing that I can do is I can go to a family, I can group together these two things and I can add an effect on there. So that was a bad example. Let's go to this menu box and then we'll go back to that. Let's go to effects, add an effect to this and let's type in tint and hit okay. And now what we can actually do here is we can tint this to be, I think the max is a hundred and then the minimum is zero. So if I put it to zero, it's all black, but if I put all of them to 100, it should be its normal color. If I put this down like this, I can just kind of mess around until I get a color that I like. And there we go, I completely changed the color of this button uh, and that button. So now when I hit play here, you can actually see that they're different colors, which is very simple to do. But obviously, you know, these are copied and pasted, so it's gonna carry over, but that's kind of, uh, 
not as beneficial as putting it into a family. Because I put these into a family, I can just go click on the buttons family here and I can go to their tint and I can control it like this, 50, 40. And now I can tint the icons as well, or this is just the, the not the icons, the button icons. I can tint both of those and I can just kind of make it work to how I want it to work. And I keep hitting save because I'm very used to doing that. But here we go, let's go to our options. You can see that I've actually changed the color of it. So that's another option that you can do with this. And it's actually a really powerful option to differentiate it from my default one. So I'm kind of excited to see what you can come up with with these UI assets and with this template in general, just to see how, how well this can help jumpstart you. I've tried to make it as minimal as possible. So I hope that this can just really get you to focus on your game and not have to worry about an options menu or any of this global music or going full screen or any of that stuff. So I hope that this uh, alleviates that pain a little bit and you can actually just focus on making your game and making it the best game you can and not have to worry about doing this. You can just replace the logo and there you go. You got your own menu system uh, that is completely working. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, always send me an email or anything like that. Reach out to me on on any platform. I will always try to respond as promptly as I can if you have any questions on this. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot and I look forward to seeing what you make with the starter template.